Morning everybody, thanks for joining me. My name is Sean Meinerker, I've been nicknamed the Wacky Whittler so it's stuck and I'm going to try and teach you folks some carving basics. For the first one I figured I'd try and do one of these little cat hangers right here. It's a pretty simple little project and it'll give a lot of the basics to you on how to read wood grain, carving angles, doing contours and such. And it's kind of a cute little thing to hang around your house. They could go on door frames or on a bookshelf, anywhere you got a nice little angle like that. Anyways, folks, if you'd like to join me, I'll get set up on my table and uh, we'll start going through the basics. Uh, below in the comments section, you'll see a JPEG image that you can save to your computer and print out yourself and get yourself the rest of the supplies I'll have listed below and we'll get started. All right, hope you got all your materials gathered up. First of all, I want to give a quick shout out to the Grumpinators. These guys are great. I have a little bit of music going on in the background because it's kind of lonely out here in the shop some days. But uh, yeah, check them out. I'll give a link below to my little playlist of some of my favorite songs on them. And uh, most of my old friends, I think, would probably enjoy them. All right. Once you've got your printout and your board, and if you have carbon paper, that's great. If not, I'll show you in a second how you can get around that little problem. Uh, figure out where you want your cat to be placed on the board. Just tape it down in place so it doesn't move around too much. Usually two or three spots will work well enough for you. Then go ahead and just trace out the whole cat. Once you have that done, you'll have your image on the board. Now, some days that if your pencils aren't marks aren't too clear, I recommend coming back with a, just a small felt tip magic marker. It makes it a lot easier to see when you're cutting and there's a bunch of sawdust. And just go over all the lines again. Now, if you don't have carbon paper, don't worry too much. Take a soft lead pencil, go over the back of your drawing, over all the lines. And that way, when you put your paper over like that, it's basically like having carbon paper on the back of it. And you can trace out your lines and get your image onto your board that way. Now, here comes the fun cutting part. This is just to get the basic uh, shape cut out of the wood now. Now, it's kind of important on this one, it was just a scrap piece of wood that I had, so I didn't worry too much about it. Uh, on yours though, you'd prefer the grain to be going like this. It just gives a little bit more strength through the tail area here because all your grains of your wood would be coming like this through it. And just makes it a little bit stronger basically because you've still got two points of contact up here where the chances of breaking, you know, is kind of less. All right, now first you want to drill yourself a hole right near the armpit of the cat there. Now you can use a, anything you want really, just make sure you don't cut any of your lines. So make your hole all the way through there. Pop it out and then you can use a jigsaw like this or a clipping saw. Unfortunately I don't have a blade on this one because I can't find them in this mess out here right now but uh, either one would be totally fine. Now you're going to want to clamp this down on your table but when you're cutting it out with either saw Try to make the area that you're cutting near the edge of the table. That way it'll give it some support and it avoids a little bit of vibration through the area you want to save. I find these kind of clamps are probably the handiest. Quick release, you know, they clamp down quick, release quick, and you can change things around. I know it's kind of a pain when you're going all the way around making all these little tiny cuts, but this is probably your best and fastest bet. All right. So once we've got all that done, you'll have that piece. Same process once again. Cut a hole somewhere in the middle here. Put your saw, get your little saw through, and cut all that part out. Pretty self-explanatory, I guess. But uh, let me see the finished product. So now we'll have this. And this is where we'll be starting to get into doing some stop cuts. And for that, I'll cut them change up the camera angle so you can get a little bit of a closer look and uh, see what's going on here. Okay gang, please excuse my appearance. I look like hell today, so I found a way around it. Alright, now first of all, one thing you should know about wood is it's got a natural grain to it. It's very fibrous type material. 
So it's almost like having a stack of straws, if you can picture that. And you always want to be cutting so that there's a release point. Like you never want to be coming at it from this direction, like, like you're cutting into the end of the, the stack of straws, because it will simply lift and then it'll keep chipping all the way down to your piece of wood. So always come in at this kind of angle so that you're cutting off the ends of it and you have a release point. And then you can come slowly work your way down to whatever depth you want in the wood there. Similar for the cat, you're going to have a few places where you're going to want to make a cut straight down into the wood, which is a stop cut, and then you'll come in from the sides, on each side, and round your corners down. Now if you were to, like I said before, if you were to come in from this angle here, you would catch into that wood and simply lift it, and then your contouring on the side, it would just completely lift the whole thing off, so you really don't want to be doing that. So with your cat as I tried to draw and demonstrate here, you're going to be changing your angles. You'll be coming in from the back of the cat towards the neck, coming inwards, and then from the, both the middle of the head down to the neck, you're going to be coming the other direction with your cuts, because all the grains of the wood is all uh, going this way, and you want to be making sure that you're kind of going, I, I think of it as kind of cutting downhill all the way, it's kind of what keeps it in my head when I'm looking at the wood. But uh, those are the few basics I wanted to give you guys before we actually get into the work now. Alright guys, once you've got your shape all cut out, we're going to start doing some carving here. First of all, we're going to have to make some stop cuts. Namely, stop cuts are used, or mainly stop cuts are used in uh, changes of elevation. So somewhere like this where the arm is behind the head, you want to be making a stop cut. The nose there, basically all these lines are going to be some form of stop cuts. The grass here, you don't have to do these ones yet. We can do those later, I'll show you the technique for those. But if you want to just trace around all the lines with uh, when you get your basic set, there'll be one that looks like this. It's a little point chisel. So basically, start anywhere you want really, but you want to go around these lines here. and. Try to get as deep as you can. You don't have to do it all in the first pass. You can go one after another, get a little bit deeper each time. Same with around the head here. The ears are back a little bit from it, so you kind of have to imagine in your head where uh, everything is going to be landing here. This one ear here will be in front of this one, so you're going to want that part deeper. So you'll end up cutting this piece deeper in the end. But basically, get all your lines. Cut down as deep as you want. Uh, I like to hold my chisel like this so you can see the bevel is on this side upwards and that way the flat side is down on my line. And I find it's a little bit easier to control going oops, going around corners. Be very careful by the way, as you just saw there, sometimes it can skip over so never get your fingers in front of your chisels. It hurts, trust me. <laughs> I've got a few scars over the years from that that uh, hopefully you can avoid for yourself. You can always wear some kind of glove for protection if you like leather or you can actually get chainmail gloves I haven't bothered I don't mind doing a couple of stitches down again kind of keeps up my sewing skills so once you get all those done you're gonna start cutting your depths I won't go through all of them it's just too tedious but I've got one started Oops, right here where you can kind of see some of the depths hopefully coming into play I'll bring the camera down a little bit closer in a minute as well. Give you guys a bit of a better look here. But as I was showing on the whiteboard, around these edges here, you're going to want to be carving. Oops, sorry. Here, you're going to want to keep your bevel. Oops, hang on a second. Let me find my lens. There it is. Hey, we're back. All right, you're going to want to keep your bevel down and your flat side up so that you're carving and releasing the chips up that way. Um, hopefully the camera caught that pretty well, but you can see how you can start to round it. Start off with about a, when your first one here, it's going to be pretty sharp angle. So just start out with a 45, you'll see how it comes up. And you'll notice once you get to this one point here, it kind of catches. So don't try lifting that off, just let it be for now. And continue rounding. And then, like I was showing on the whiteboard, come back at it from this angle, about midway through your head. So. 
in keeping with the grain of the wood. I don't know if you can see the grain of the wood too well, but it's all going this way. So basically, I'm like I said before, I'm kind of carving downhill. Same with this one. I'm kind of carving downhill and trying to get in the middle. Don't worry if there's a little bit. Try and get to the same depth both sides as best you can here. But you can see after a little bit of work, you can round this out and start getting some of the shape to that. Same with the tail. The grain of the wood's going like this, so imagine carving downhill. And it will travel along really nicely here. And lift those up in nice little curls. Now, remember again, you're coming to a transition point there. So turn around and come back from the other way. It's going to depend on the grain of your wood that you have yourself as well. So it's one thing you'll have to get to learn a little bit about reading is how the grain of the wood can change and uh, the way you're supposed to come out attacking it. Anyways, that's the basics on getting some of the rounding done on the outside. Now, for some of your transition points here, you're going to want to drop that down a bit. So, easiest way for that, come in on a bit of an angle towards your stop cut, not too deep because a lot of times your stop cut won't be too deep. And then you can change it back around, start rounding off the arm of your cat. And if you see it start catching there a bit, simply come back with your pointed chisel again and cut your lines. Again, try and not to go over the other piece of wood because if you cut into a point that you're not planning on taking out, then it leaves a nasty mark that you're going to have to sand out eventually. And then again, go back to my flat chisel here. Try and stay with the grain of the wood. I kind of pull along this way because as you can see the line is coming this way. And don't force it too much. When your chisels are good and sharp and you're following the grain of the wood, with pine, it just kind of flows. It's really nice. All right, and basically continue with all your lines that way. All right, guys. Once you've got most of your rounding out done, there's gonna be a couple of tricky spots here. One of them will be inside this leg here. But the easiest way to do it: take the tip of your chisel, and you keep making your stop cuts deeper and deeper, just so you can get that finer or the deeper definition here. Then take your point, pull it kind of towards you, at the same time kind of going into the cut, and that'll pop your little piece right out. And then you can go in afterwards with the point once again, and just get that last little bit there. Might be a couple of hairs left in there. All right. Now the eye will be tricky, of course, because there's going to be a few different ways because you're cutting a circle here. Same thing though, all my grain and my wood right now is going like this. So again, highest point to lowest point on the grain of the wood will be going this way. So around it, I have to start kind of in the middle of the circle here, slowly taking a bit away, slowly angling my chisel downwards a little bit more each time. And I can slowly met start to round this off. Once you get to the top, stop. And you're going to want to come in from the other side. Sometimes I find it easier to flip my chisel over and start doing the same thing again. From highest to lowest point. I'm not going to bother going through the whole process because I'm sure you folks can understand just from the simple parts of it. Again, middle of the circle, highest point. You're going to go to the lowest point there. I find it's easier sometimes to use my thumb as a lever. Put my chisel on that and get the tip where I want it to and then just roll it over. It gives you a little bit more control that way. Same thing for this side, middle of the circle to the lowest point. <coughs> Excuse me. And hopefully you can see how that starts to round out the eye. Just keep doing a little bit of work like that, and then you can do the same thing for the outside of the eye. Just don't give it quite as much of a rounding, just a little bit. I'll show you on the other one here in a second. See how I just kind of barely rolled it in just a little bit. Just to give the eye quite a bit of definition. 
Okay, ears. You'll have your stop cuts already cut in there. Find one of the easiest ways, you'll have your stop cut there as well. At this point here, you'll have curved this downwards. Oh, sorry folks, I'll get this back in the frame and help you. Because of the stop cut here, and you've already cut this downwards, now you're going kind of cutting across a couple of different grains of wood. So that will make things a little bit more challenging here for you. I like taking my V gouge, getting into the ear here, and just take on the one side there. Give it a little bit of definition. Leave the other side as high as you can. That light doesn't catch up very well there. And same for the other side. You don't want to try and go from this way because you're at a lower point. And I'll do it here, see if it does it on me. My chisel is pretty sharp, so it might not. Oh, I got lucky that time. But uh, actually, you can kind of see it if you look up close. As I carved up there, it chipped that little piece of wood off and left that ragged edge, as opposed to this side, where I went from the highest point to the lowest point. And you can see how nice and smooth it is there, both sides. So yeah. But it's not hard to fix that. Flip it over, chisel the proper way, and just tidy that up. There, a little bit of sanding, you won't know the difference. Just like Bob Ross says, there are no mistakes. I wish I would have told that to my fourth grade, grade math teacher, though. All right. Sorry curling over the ear a little bit there. Again, highest point to the lowest point on that curve there. Alright. I'll get on to the bird bath part next. Alright. Now we're moving on to the bird bath here. Now the way I did mine, let's take the V gouge again. I've already done all my stop cuts along where all the lines are here. And I just came in there with that kind of cleaned out the underside of the rim of the bird bath there. You might want to do a couple of passes, make it a little bit neater and tidier. It'll start giving you a little bit of depth there now. Same thing goes for, I'll show you here on the finished one. See how there's that kind of rim there and then I've got the little circles here. For the rim, take your V-gouge once again. Go along there, just pick up a spot around the inside there, going over top of all the circles. Like I said, it might take a couple passes. And then you could do your uppercuts afterwards if you like. Now, as you can see, there's a bit of a ridge here between the rim and that other little detail there. Just come in with your chisel later on and take some of that out, lower it down so it looks like it's got some depth to it all, raises that up a little bit. And around the edges here, just like on the cat body, just round them around until you get the desired effect. Sorry, it's kind of hard to keep this in focus and carve it all at the same time, but... And like that. That way you can round around, make it look like it's a completely rounded bowl. Just keep coming around the sides there. Now if around the circle, it's a little bit more intricate. Take your little fine point again. I've already done the cuts all the way around them. Come in here, you take little bits out at a time. I tend to roll mine over the circle, trying to make sure the tip doesn't pass by and cut into the next circle but bring it back a little bit at the same time back in that little corner continue like that clean out that little area you can tidy it up later with a little bit of sandpaper and same thing goes for the bottom it's kind of blending all the different uh, depths together this way I'm a little bit used to this one so I can kind of go back and forth bring that all the way across once again, later you can come in, clean up all these little pieces that are sticking out there on you. All 
All right. Now the grass, I'll assume that you've already cut all that out. Normally I would detail it a little bit better like this one, but uh, I've got a couple in the process and I just want to explain things on this one. It's a little bit easier. I've got it all cut out here now and I wanted to do the little detail coming here. So a chance for you to try your little scoop gouge or U gouge, I guess you can call them. Have to excuse me, I don't really know the proper terminology for everything. But that, you can come back to your stop cut. Start from the top, go down to your bottom. Try not to go too deep on your first pass. You want to make sure you don't go deeper than your stop cut. And the same for all three of those. Now you can see here where I'm started catching the green, so I'm going the wrong way. I want to change that around this way. And go back the other way and tidy it up a little bit with the corner chisel. And same goes for the last one. You can start at the top so you don't get too far along and then just tidy it up. Now the same thing that you did over on the other side around the face and the arm here is you're going to want to do that where your grass meets the bird fountain here. So take your flat chisel because all the grains going this way should cut nicely back down towards your lines there. Hopefully I got most of my stop cuts deep enough where you'll be able to see the, how it will start changing the detail a little bit. Now you might have to come back in afterwards with your other gouge and clean that up. But uh, you can see how you can start bringing this down and making it look like the grass is a little bit more forward than the water fountain there. And it'll take a little while. I'm not going to spend the whole video doing it. I'm sure you folks can kind of understand the processes here. Like I said, if you start coming in this way of the, on a cut, starting from the downhill part, going towards the uphill, you'll catch and you'll feel it. You won't be able to like lift it off. Always make sure when you're carving, start from the uphill part on the green and go towards the downhill. Highest to lowest always. And round out your bird path. And before you know it, you'll have a piece that's completely carved out. Looking like that. Well, gang, I guess that about wraps it up. From concept all the way up to hopefully your first creation of a little cat hanger for somewhere in your home. Once again, I'd like to give a big thanks and shout out to Grumpinators. It's just a little carving I made in their trip, kind of a little tribute to them. Thanks to the pups for keeping me company. Yeah, it's kind of camera shy Harley anyways. But uh, yeah, up next I figured I had a bunch of these half logs kicking around, so if you like guys like some of the masks I made, then uh, I figure I'll give you guys a quick mass tutorial next. But in the meantime, me and the angry pickle here, we got a bunch of work lined up that we gotta get finished up and done, trying to keep lights on in this place, and a bunch more over there. But we'll hopefully get to it. I'll keep you guys posted on the dragon walking stick here. I've got all the wires circuited through and stuff. I still gotta make a little dragon cover. But I got that shaped, and then I gotta do all this scale work on him, which is gonna be a heck of a lot of fun. But, anyways, guys, thanks for showing up for the video and putting up with the whole thing, and uh, hope to see you guys soon. But for now, Harley and I, we're gonna go get some fresh air. Come on, pup. And see what kind of mischief the sister is getting into. Hell oh, yeah. Probably digging in the garden again, looking for carrots. Anyways, guys, hope you all have a great day. Take care of each other and look forward to seeing you all again soon.